What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the settings to adjust and change if you're on iOS 16. So a quick recap, right now we are in the development stage of this beta profile. So this is iOS 16 beta one and the public beta will become available next time in July. The compatible devices are listed right here in front of the display and the phone we're using right now is an iPhone 13 Pro. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So these are the hidden features to enable or change to unlock some additional features. So let's go ahead and start off with Safari. Safari can now be shared across all your devices. By that, I mean like if you have a certain tab open on your iPad and you'd like to res quickly resume later on on your iPhone, they'll be linked all together. And you can do this with your computer as well. So to enable this, just quickly go ahead and go into settings, scroll down to Safari, and right here where it says setting for websites, share across devices, enable that, and now everything is synchronized to your account, which is quite neat. Now, next thing I wanna go ahead and cover is the haptic feedback on the keyboard. Yes, now the native Apple keyboard now can give you haptic feedback, but by default, this is disabled. To enable this, just go into your settings. You're gonna go ahead and find it in the sound and haptic tabs right here. Scroll down where it says keyboard feedback, click on here, now you have the two options between not just sound, but haptics. Enable the haptic tab. And now whenever you launch something that requires you to type something like the Apple keyboard, you'll feel a haptic feedback, which is quite nice. This way you know when a keyboard stroke is registered. And then if we quickly go back underneath here where it says uh, ring slash silent mode switch, you can decide if you want the silent mode to disable this or keep it enabled. Now going back in the home page, the little dot icon here, not only will show you the, the page number you're in, but if you just let go of it, it's gonna switch to a search tab. If you like to disable this, all you have to do is go into your settings, go into home screen, and where it says show spotlight search, this is where you go in to disable that if you like to revert back to how it originally was because when you have this off we go back to our home page you can still pull down for search uh, spotlight search this way so i guess the app was just gave us two ways to have access to this and if you rely on a third-party controller for mobile gaming this also includes the ipad previously we had act we had the ability to pair a playstation controller or an xbox controller it doesn't matter if it's a playstation 4 or 5 or xbox one or series x or whatever number they're on right now but now you have the capability to pair a joy con controller from a nintendo switch or even the nintendo pro controller so that's now supported and you could quickly google it to quickly understand how to pair each controller the process really only takes a matter of seconds now the next thing I like to go ahead and cover is the hidden photo al album as well as the recently deleted album. If you don't know, now requires Face ID to have access to this. This is a great way to like actually keep things private because before whenever you put stuff in the hidden folder, unless you're looking for it, you could there was no like passcode or anything like that preventing somebody else from wondering and finding whatever you're trying to hide. But now it's actually locked by Face ID. But in case you do want to reverse back to the non-Face ID requirement, you could easily do so. All you got to do is just go back in your settings, scroll down to Photos, and here where it says Use Face ID, this is where you can actually enable or have that feature disabled. Personal preference once more, but you could reverse back to it if, if you don't like it. Now, live text caption is a feature you can enable. It's not 100% accurate, but it gets the job done. This is something similar we've seen in the past with like Android phones, like the Pixel. They had this innovation. Well, now you have it on the iPhone. So whenever you're playing a video by default, it will actually generate the live captions. So if you'd like to go ahead and try this out, you can go ahead and go into your settings, scroll into accessibilities, and then just scroll down where it says live caption still in the beta so keep this in mind it's not going to be perfect just go ahead and enable it right here and now a little thing is popping up and next time whenever you launch like a video with somebody talking you'll notice live captions will actually pop up and same applies on facetime calls and etc it's pretty neat to the most part now since we're here another thing i like to go ahead and cover is the apple watch mirroring function 
if you could, if you don't know, you can actually control your Apple Watch from your iPhone now. And to do this, it's back in the accessibility tab still. Just go into where it says mirror Apple Watch. A new window will pop up once you hit enabled. Right now the screen is black, but in the near future, the screen here will actually mimic the same screen that's on your Apple Watch, but there should be a red ring around your Apple Watch display. And this basically allows you to have the freedom to basically navigate your Apple Watch from your iPhone. So if your Apple Watch isn't responding or something happened to it, or you're just having a hard time seeing, you need a larger dis display, this will grant you that ability to see everything in a much bigger format. And yes, the digital crown and the power button are responsive. Now if you pair AirPods, your new AirPods settings are, can be located on the very top. This little tab will pop up. So no longer do you have to fiddle with tab to tabs just to change certain things on your AirPods. So aside from the lock screen, to quickly customize, you simply just tap and hold. We should all be familiar with this by now. But if you like to actually blur the home page background, it's different. To do that, you have to actually go into the settings. I'm sure Apple will change this in the near future. Just go into the wallpaper tab. And from here, this is where you'll find three options, two of which are the blur feature. So there you have it. So if you like to blur the background on your home page, that's how you could do that. And then something interesting I discovered is the fitness app. You can now send gift cards somehow. So instead of going into the app store, you can also do it on the fitness app. And I think it's easier than the app store. The app store is kind of cluttered with a bunch of stuff. So if you like to quit send a quick gift card to somebody for their birthday or something, whatever special occasion, easy access is right here. Now, if your device does have an eSIM, like my device does, I have two. If you actually go into your settings, there's a new ability that we just receive where down here where it says set up eSIM, of course it's all be blurry because my personal number is right here as well as my other number. But this new page will pop up and this actually gives you the freedom to actually transfer your eSIM from your this current phone to the new one. So this is interesting. Before, this process wasn't as easy. And then lastly, if you like to lock your notes, now you have the freedom to actually change the lock type of password that you want. So before it was default, but now if you actually go into the settings and scroll into your the notes section right here and click on password, I'm gonna blur the top part because your iCloud information is on top. But here you have the ability to choose two password methods, actually three if you like to enable Face ID, you could totally do that. You could choose the device default password or a custom password. And then of course you have Face ID. If you don't want Face ID to go on, you have to actually type in the password. You, could hit, you now have the freedom to do that for the, those locked notes. Other than that, there you guys have it. Those are the cool hidden features that you can find in the settings section of an iPhone running the beta or even the official launch version. I'm pretty sure not much is gonna change of iOS 16. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got some good useful information out of this video. If you did, greatly appreciate if you actually leave the video a like because it does help me out a lot and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. And for more future updates, if there's a new next update coming out in the near future, I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands on it and see what I can find and create more videos similar to this. So yeah, definitely subscribe if you're into this type of stuff as well. Aside from that, if you'd like to watch more, check out this video over here. If you have an Apple Watch, that's basically all the new changes and hidden features that I found on WatchOS 9. And then the other video over there, that's the complete guide. It's a long video, but that's a complete guide of all the hidden features that iOS 16 has to offer. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.